Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Describe the Z statistic of proportion, compute the Z value for population proportion, and solve problems involving the Z value for population proportion. Let's have a quick review. Here are the conditions for estimating population proportion. Make sure each situation meets these conditions. Number three here will determine if the sample size is sufficiently large. If it is, then we can apply the central limit theorem. And we can use the normal distribution to model the sampling distribution for the sample proportion. Hence, we can use z-test. By the way, other books uses greater than or equal to 10 or greater than or equal to 15. Make sure you follow the instruction of your teacher. Let's have an activity. Noting details. Identify the given and determine if the sample size is enough. Before we do that, let us examine first if this situation meets all the conditions. Number one, the sample is a simple random sample. It says here in a random sample of 300 customers. So number one, check. Number two, the conditions for the binomial distribution are satisfied. One of that, there is a fixed number of trials. This is our sample size and we have here 300, our N. Next, the trials are independent. The answer of one customer will not affect the answer of the other customers. Next one, there are two categories of outcomes. It's either they go back to this restaurant or not. And last one, the probabilities remain constant for each trial. The probability of getting an answer whether a customer will come back to this restaurant or not remains constant for the rest of the 300 customers. Number three, we are going to compute for this one a little later. Now, let us determine the given in this situation. We have here P, the population proportion. It says here a manager in the restaurant claims that more than 75%. So this is our population proportion, 0.75. Our N is the sample size, which is 300. And out of 300, 230 said yes, that they have eaten more than once in this restaurant. That is our successes. So X is equal to 230. From here, we can compute for the p hat. I hope you still remember the formula. That would be x divided by n. So we have 230 divided by 300, and that will give us 0 0.77. I will also compute for the value of q. I hope you also remember the formula, and that is 1 minus p. 1 minus p, and my p is 0 0.75, and that will give me 0 0.25. To determine if the sample size is sufficiently large, let us solve for NP. Our N again is 300. Our P is 0 0.75. The product of this is 225. And this is greater than 5. Now let us solve for NQ. Again, N is 300. NQ this time is 0 0.25. This will give us 75. It's still greater than 5. Both NP and NQ are greater than 5, therefore the sample size is sufficiently large. In one of my previous lessons, I have already introduced the formula we are going to use in solving involving population proportion. Again, Z sub B here is the Z statistic for proportion. P hat is the sample proportion. P is the population proportion. N is the sample size. And Q is equal to 1 minus P. Let's have an activity, computing Z. Let us recall our answers in our activity earlier and also the formula for computing the Z statistic. Previously, we used the notation Z tab because the value comes from the Z table. Now, let us use Z com to indicate that the value comes from the computation using this formula. Let us substitute our given here. P hat is equal to 0 0.77. P is 0 0.75. P again is 0 0.75. Q is 0 0.25. And our N is equal to 300. 
You may encode this into your calculator like this way, or you may follow this one. So make sure that you group your numerator as 1, 0 0.77 minus 0 0.75, that is our numerator. And then we are going to group also 0 0.75 times 0 0.25, this one here, before we divide it by 300. And this will give us 0 0.8. Let us try this. Let us substitute our given here in our formula. P hat is equal to 0 0.65. P is equal to 0 0.68, P again is 0 0.68, Q is 0 0.32, and our N is equal to 500. Encode this in your calculator. Instead of using two pairs of parentheses here, you may also use a multiplication symbol. 0 0.68 times 0 0.32 is just the same as this one. Or you may encode this in this manner. And this will give us negative 1.44. Let us have another one. This time we are only given P, N, and P hat. We do not have Q. So instead of using this formula, let me replace Q by 1 minus P. Now let us substitute. P hat is 55% in decimal, that is 0 0.55. P is 0 0.48. P again is 0 0.48. And then we have 1 minus our p again is 0 0.48 divided by our n which is 150. Encode this into your calculator or you may do it this way. Let me just put emphasis here. This pair of parentheses here is for the difference of 1 and 0 0.48 while this pair of parentheses is for the product of 0 0.48 and the answer in this group. Make sure you encode it properly so you will arrive at the correct answer. And this will give us 1.72. Let us do extra challenge. Determine if the sample size is enough, then solve for the Z value. 75 11-year-old kids were asked if they have their own smartphone. 40 answered yes. Is this statistically different from the recent study that 53% of kids now have their own smartphone? So let us identify first the given. Our P here, it says here from the recent study, 53%. This will be our population proportion in decimal 1 to 0 0.53. Our N, 75, 11-year-old kids were asked. So this is our sample size, 75. And our X, the number of successes, 40 answered yes. So X is equal to 40. Let us compute for P hat. That would be X over N. So 40 divided by 75. And this will give us 0 0.53. Notice that my P is equal to my P hat. Now, let me solve for Q. That would be 1 minus P. So, 1 minus 0 0.53. And this is 0 0.47. To determine if the sample size is sufficiently large, let us solve for NP. Again, our N is 75. Our P is 0 0.53. And this will give us 39.75. And this is greater than 5. Now, for NQ. Again, our N is 75, and this time our Q is 0 0.47. This will give us 35.25, and this is greater than 5. By the way, try to add this too. If you add this too, it will give you the answer of 75, your sample size. That is one way to check if your NP and NQ are correct. Add them both and that will result to your sample size. Now let us solve for our Z value. Let us substitute our given here. Our P hat is 0 0.53. Our P is also 0 0.53. Again, P is 0 0.53. Q is 0 0.47 and our N is 75. Without using the calculator, you should know that the answer here is equal to 0. Why? Because 0 0.53 minus 0 0.53 is 0. And 0 divided by any number except 0 will give you 0 for an answer. 
For the summary, here are the things that we discussed in this lesson. Take time to understand this. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. Just like what we did earlier, we're going to determine if the sample size is enough and then we're going to solve for the Z value. You believe that it is more likely to born a boy than a girl. In a random sample of 9,686 births, 4,903 are male. Test the claim at 0 0.10 level of significance. So let us identify the given here. Our population proportion, is there anything mentioned about it? None. If that is the case, we use P is equal to 50% or 0 0.50. After all, you only have two options, boy or girl. Our population proportion, 0 0.50. Our N, a random sample of 9,686. And our X, 4,903 are male. P hat is X over N, and this will give us 0 0.51. Let us continue. Let us solve for our Q, and that is equal to 1 minus P. So 1 minus 0 0.50 is also 0 0.50. Now let us solve for NP. Again, our N is 9,686, and our P is 0 0.50. This will give us 4,843, and this is greater than 5. Now for NQ, since my P and Q are equal, then I expect the same answer. So this is also greater than 5. Now let us solve for the Z value. Let us substitute our given here. Our P hat is equal to 0 0.51. Our P is 0 0.50. Again, P is 0 0.50. Q is also 0 0.50. And our N is 9,686. And this will give us 1.97. Gets? Our next lesson is drawing conclusion about population proportion based on test statistic value and rejection region. 